Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Catholic Talk Show. Today we're going to be talking about our favorite Catholic saints. Yeah, we're going to look at the saints that have impacted our lives, the ones that we have a particular devotion to, and the ones that we want to share with you. All holy men and women, pray for us. Hey guys, it's really great to be back in the studio with you, Father Rich, Father Ryan. I'm loving this show. Yes. I got some favorite Catholic saints. Do you got some favorite I Catholic do. saints? I do. The energy is very high in this it room because so we awesome. love talking because about the I'll saints. Tell you right now, I'll tell you right now, I've got a ton of saints in the college of my collection. That's right. In the, the college of your collection? Yeah, I've got, you know, like yeah, back in the day, I used to collect baseball cards, uh, basketball cards. Uh, okay. Uh. I have holy cards. Yeah. Oh. And the holy cards that I carry with me, St. John Paul II, mm-hmm. hey, St. Hey, Faustina. Hey, don't get, oh, don't don't get into it. Do Come it. on, man. Okay. Okay. Come on, Padre. Well, before we do that, we want to make sure that you get on our all of our social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, as well as explore a way to support the show to make sure that we continue to produce these beautiful productions by your generosity. Patreon.com forward slash the Catholic talk show gives you the ability to support us financially to ensure that these shows continue in their production as well as you become our saints. Would you do that? You become our patron saints because and through I, your financial support and intercession, you allow this show to continue. And to be I made. just want to say how beautiful it's been to do this show with you guys for, I don't know, a year plus whatever. And to see that support come in to, to, discuss how we can use that money to bring people in Mm -hmm. to, to create new shows, to buy new equipment for Howard. We've got a little, Howard is happy. Yes, he's happy, but it's, it's helped us a lot. It's all about fellowship because, you know, when you look at the college of the saints and, and the fellowship of the saints, that's, that's ultimately what Christ is developing among our relationship. And, that, you know, we wouldn't be able to do this show without you. So we really sincerely from the bottom of our hearts want to thank you so much for your support and your generosity and for all the people praying for the show. We're going to continue doing this. And it's it's such a joy to be here together with you guys and to talk about patron saints, because a lot of my life is dictated by the example of men and women that have gone before me. And mm. I really lean into them and, and on an intercession level. Yeah. As well as just really how they overcame a lot of their own obstacles in life. Yeah. And so I, I look at it kind of like the old school saints, like from the, the first through fifth century. I look at a lot of the ones that are around us today, you know, from uh, the, the last couple of centuries. Yeah, like most recent saints. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, there's a lot to be gleaned from their, their lives, their virtue and their sacrifices, yeah, man. Their, their blood in some For sure. cases, For sure. you know, that has really like formed our, our Christian and Catholic faith. Yeah. I mean, the saints provide an example and intercession that has been so important in my life. I, you know, time and time again, when, the the mystery of the Trinity and the Godhead seems distant to me, and prayer is hard. There's so many examples in the lives of the saints that actually make it feasible for me to say that this life is capable to be lived as a holy person. There's people who have done it. Now, living up to their example is going to be hard, but that's what they're there for. They're to give us something to aspire to that... Um, is an example. They're heroes of the faith. And the saints have been such an important part of my life. I would, my career in Catholic media and the Catholic world started around the saints. I mean, some of my earliest memories are there's a little, there's that book of saints. Uh, you probably have all seen it. Mm, what's the name of it? Taylor? Was it, the little, Was it Taylor? The, it's like the little book of saints and it has those like old, oh. like kind of watercolor drawings. In yeah, there. yeah. Yeah. I, and that book, I mean, when I was a kid, I used to read that all the time. Well, that's and just, cool. You know, that, and then when I got older, I'd read Alban Butler's Lives of the Saints. Oh, Butler. Butler's yeah. mm-hmm. Lives of the Saints, mm-hmm. yeah. And um, just what w- is the one saint that really stood out for you, or maybe a group of saints, reading through that that periodical? Because I remember that, actually, that book. You know, that, that, that book. So many of them. I could picture all of them in my head. Yeah, you know? I can, too. The way you were describing it, it was immediately coming back yeah. into my mind. Um, I remember looking through it, and you'll see the, the, the Pope saints, and you see the hats, and then you'll see the ancient saints. Then you'll see the medieval saints, and they all 
having a face to them in that book as a kid really made the names that I would hear in the litany in church or when I would hear the holy metal, it made it very real to me. Um, so who are your favorite saints? Who are some of the saints that have really impacted your life? For me, my favorite saint, this is very hard, but my favorite saint is St. John the Apostle. Mm -hmm. To me, he, he's been such an inspiration. I took him as my confirmation name. I've named my son after him. Um, the way that he never left our Lord and he was there to the end and he took in Our Lady mm -hmm. as his mother, you know, it's and beautiful. our mother. And then he wrote the most high-minded theological. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Christological oh my gospel. Gosh. And that he, he beautiful. suffered for the faith, but was never Truly. martyred. Yeah. And that when he was so old, he could barely talk that all of this life experience from the foot of the cross to revelation on Patmos to having our mother with him in Ephesus. Mm. And he was carried around by the early Christians and he was the last living apostle who knew yeah. Jesus. Mm. And he was a hundred years old and all he could say is little children love each other. Out of curiosity, how old were you when you started to develop those sentiments? So young. Five. Really? five oh, wow. Yeah, six. Wow. That's mean, very unique. Yeah, that is, is very, very unique. Yeah, St. John has been with me everywhere I've went. Um, you know, and particularly in his the role as St. John the Beloved. Mm -hmm. You know, you have St. John the Evangelist, St. John the, the Apostle. They're the same person. But in his charism as St. John the Beloved, the way that That's he beautiful, cared bro. for Mary in her, into her old age, cared for our Lord, had the outran Peter to get to the tomb first, how he mm -hmm. didn't leave our Lord, how he was thrown in a pot of boiling oil, how he suffered, how he was in Patmos and exiled, how he lived as the last living Testament where he was the youngest. And then he was also the oldest apostle. Mm. There's so much. And alone. At and the alone. End. There's so yeah. much completion in his life that mm. I, I just, I love St. John so much. But as what a young a beautiful kid, testimony, bro. Yeah. But as a young kid, it's like you're looking at him and how do you put him in juxtaposition to all the others? You're reading this big book, Butler's Lives you of know, the Saints. I, you or? know, my grandpa's name was John. And I, immediately I'm like, oh, John, and, you know, and then you just read about him, right? You're looking at Ambrose and you're looking at, you know, whomever in this book and you're looking at Athanasius and uh, Augustine and you see all these saints, but then you say, oh, I know this name as a young kid. And you're like, John, mm -hmm. and you read about him and then the gospel. And it's just, I don't know. He's always been with me. But I have to say that's, that's kind of unique, Sheil. It and is. I, and, and it I'm is. not, and I'm, you know, I'm not surprised because you have a unique charism. You have a unique gift from God and. And you live it out so beautifully. And in all honesty, I mean, like it really, it touches, it touches my life in many different ways. And I'm, I'm very grateful for your friendship and, and to see your tie so closely with John, the beloved John, the evangelist for me, John came into my life probably more later mm -hmm. in my, in my journey of, of walking with Christ. Um, but certainly when I look at when I was you know, the age that you were describing when I was younger, I have a different, a different patron saying, who's that? Well, I'm, a, I'm, I, for me, it was, it was Francis. Okay. You know, like St. Francis was, it, it was the statues that my grandmother had. Mm -hmm. And then really being fascinated from the time I was probably like four years old, five years old of Francis interacting with all of creation. And he felt intimately connected with you know, the animals and the wolf of Gubbio and, and really living this extreme poverty, choosing that way of life. If you ever became a professional wrestler or a luchador, you should be known as the wolf of Gubbio or <laughs> <laughs> Los Lobos de Gubbio. That would be the top rope. That Bang. would be perfect. But, you know, like Francis <laughs> for me as a for, child, uh, memes. <laughs> Francis for me as a child, it started to stoke my my love of being in nature. So I would take my my German Shepherd out into the backyard and into the woods across the street, and then I would take seeds from my from my grandmother's garden, and she would have me plant them in the backyard. And I was very very much into nature very early on, and I remember the statues of Saint Francis around my around my home. Mm -hmm. Out of curiosity, like Delacross, like what was your most earliest memory as a child relating to the saints what was that first initial like kind of mystery or maybe the the person that you first interacted with yeah that didn't happen <laughs> 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 that didn't happen no. 
Yeah, it was. Um, it doesn't have to be in your childhood. It was it? definitely post conversion. Mm. Uh, not not saying. I mean, I was raised Catholic, and and you know, obviously there was post reversion. There's yeah, a relic reversion. of Saint Anthony of Padua in your altar at Resurrection Catholic Church. Yeah, in Arlington. Well, I don't know if that's the same Anthony I'm going to talk about, but maybe this is. Oh, maybe Anthony maybe there's of Egypt. Some, maybe there's some. Yeah, that's is that who I'm, you're going to no, talk about? No, 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 not my first. He's my second. Hmm. Um, I would think with you, it's Saint Joseph. It is. Yeah. Uh, again, oh, yeah, yeah. Again, firstborn son. Yep. Well, you yeah. named him John. Jo- yep. I named mine Joseph. And uh, who'd you name yeah. here for? Oh, that's right. Oops, sorry. It would have been celibacy. It would have been John Paul. John Paul. Yeah, that would have been my my firstborn son. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I mean, I, I appreciate both the all stories and yeah. I mean, unfortunately, I didn't have anything growing up where I just kind of was drawn into the faith and all that, and or, or had some 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 semblance of it that I drew back on later in life. It was this, you know, I had a Eucharistic conversion uh, when I had when I had my conversion. It was on March nineteenth, two thousand and two, which is the feast of Saint Joseph, which I had no idea it was the feast of Saint Joseph. The, the terror of demons, right? Like I was completely and utterly terrorized and, and, uh, living a, a completely like different life and, um, met Christ and, um, and, and developed a personal relationship with him, a Eucharistic sacramental relationship with him started reverting back to my faith. And in the reversion, you start uncovering things kind of like that you didn't recognize or see. Uh, or you were not aware of. And as I, it was kind of like peeling back an onion. You're mm-hmm. like here, 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 here. And then March 19th was my conversion. And I knew that I'll never forget that day. I can tell you everything about it. And um, for some reason, um, I'm sure it's through the grace of God. For some reason, when I came to this understanding that this was this date and I, I looked at the circumstances around what happened to me and I brought it to God. Mm. St. Joseph just emanated from that. Mm. And, and when he did, I forever felt a connection to him. Now, St. Joseph is this like, you know, kind of like the Archaea saint, you know, it's just like, this is like the, the, the foster father of God, the terror of demons. Like you go down the list and it's high it's and so mighty. many titles. Yeah. It's high and mighty yeah. for, because of his humility, mm-hmm. you know, his humility, his humility flew in the face of all things evil. Right. Um, and so it took me time to start piecing this stuff together and realizing that, he, he did terrorize the demons around me when mm. I had my conversion. And so I did name my son Joseph after him, but ultimately, uh, you know, started up a devotion to him. Ancillary to that, um, one of my biggest God moments was in a monastery. And uh, it was in, uh, in Georgia somewhere. And I'm telling you, man, I've never felt the presence of God around me so much. And St. Anthony the, uh, of the desert in mm. Egypt the founder of monasticism, right, just came ringing through, and I just clutched into him and just said, "Wow, I'm devoting to you." And then later, Padre Pio and other stuff we'll talk about later. But that's sort of like my relationship. I think, and most importantly, my relationship with saints came from like peeling back the onion of my baptism and how I was raised and what happened, and then going back into and uncovering these mm-hmm. things to realize the presence of their, you know, their support in my life. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. It really yeah, I think is. so often saints, <clears throat> and you notice it later, but they open doors for you to kind of come back into the church. Mm-hmm. Um, in really interesting ways. And like, like you said, you, you don't realize at the time. And then you look back and you look at the dates, you're like, oh, that's saint. And then you notice that saint. And I almost call it holy stalking, that they they follow you around. Yeah. They, mm-hmm. and, and they're helping you out in all these different ways it's like having a it's like having a patron but it's like having you know just someone who's always helping you yeah mm-hmm. yeah somebody somebody in heaven that literally takes you under their wing in prayer mm-hmm. and offers it to the lord mm-hmm. so that's who, that's it who are some of your other favorite saints maria goretti and saint valentine 
between between the hey the one at a time, man. Slow down. I know. Yeah. What we're, we're all the same <laughs> but, but it's it's what you brought up because July sixth in our calendar is the feast of Saint Maria Goretti, mm-hmm. but July sixth in the in the Eastern calendar is Saint Valentine. Mm-hmm. February fourteenth is the day of my birth of my, of my grandfather, who is has had the greatest influence on my life and in my journey. And he was born on the 14th, and my grandparents were married around St. Wow. Valentine's Day as my, well. My nephew was born on the 14th, and his name is Stephen Francis Valentine. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I didn't know that. So both Maria Goretti and Valentine were right out of the get-go, like, in my life. So mm-hmm. I knew who Valentine was. I knew everyone who know, Maria no, Everyone Goretti knows was. who St. Valentine is. And what know? about Goretti? But, but like, talk sh- about St. Maria Goretti, because mm-hmm. her story is... Absolutely amazing, and everyone out there might not and really her know about her. daughter is still alive. No, no, you're thinking. No, she was. Yeah, no, you're she, thinking of um, Saint Gianna. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah she was Mom. an adolescent, and her her beauty was manipulated, and and she was, you know, the she was living with a family in just outside of Rome, really in Natuno, and you know there was this family. They were living in the same type of a flat. And, you know, a young man, probably in his late teens, early 20s, uh, attacked her and she refused and he stabbed her. Mm. And I believe it, he was he, she he, was stabbed he, over 14 times. Yeah, Alessandro. And Alessandro. Yeah. And um, in fact, Alessandro, after he stabbed her, um, was put into prison. She passed away. She, she forgave appeared, him even while she was while dying. She was, while she was, while she was attacked. attacked. Yeah, and she, but I mean, she appeared to him in a dream and presented him 14, I think, lilies, representative of the amount of times that he stabbed her. Hmm. And it converted his life, as you could imagine. So there in the prison cell, he gave his life to Christ and her witness of chastity and virginity and total consecration to Jesus Christ was the the catalyst for his own journey in faith and the most beautiful aspect of her of her process of canonization was the fact that Alessandro came to Rome and was present at her canonization wow. and held hands with, with her family mm, with her mother with her mother that is beyond anything that I could ever supernatural. Um, it's totally supernatural. If that's not miraculous, I don't know. Alessandro, I don't know what he, is. he went on to become a gardener and a porter at a convent with the friars, Capuchin mm-hmm. friars for the mm-hmm. rest of his life. Oh. And he wrote this letter um, about it when he was very old, like 90. Now this happened in like 1902. Mm-hmm. This is not Early like 20th century. Yeah, this is not a long time ago, yeah. but that Recent story history. is so powerful. Oh, I mean, it really is. There's an attempted, uh, rape of a saint and he killed her, but then had a vision and the conversion. And that's amazing. I mean, his story is almost as remarkable as hers. So why really are you is. so drawn to her? Cause you know, well, it's it was the day of, of my birth. Okay. And then, and then it also just ties into my own, my own journey as being a man and, and asking for Maria Gretti to chase in my heart, to make me pure of heart so that I could appreciate and protect the vulnerability and the innocence of, of, you know, purity really that, that I could, that I could be a part of that community of protection. Yeah, yeah. You know, Alessandro, though he had a lapse of, of judgment and, and he, you know, was intending to rape and murder, look at his conversion. And he became a defender of those realities mm. after that because he was radically transformed in the grace of Jesus Christ. And Maria Goretti confronted him in her boldness and her courage. I don't know if his cause for canonization is open, but it wouldn't surprise me if one day it was and it advanced. Yeah. It really yeah. wouldn't surprise I've, me. I've always had an <sighs> endearing relationship with him. And it was it's mainly because of how much Maria Goretti showed love to him. Yeah. You know, you, you think she of that. showed real Christian love to real the, Christian love to the person who murdered and att- attempted to rape and murdered her. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's mm. an astounding story. It really is. Yeah. So the so where I'm going with the monasticism here with <clears throat> Anthony is the 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 union with God that somebody experiences when they reject or walk away from society to to fall in love with the Lord and the miraculous things that happen around them. Like if you think about somebody that just says, you know, I'm just going to go in the desert and be with you, Lord. Like you'd think somebody would be falling out of sort of society altogether, mm-hmm. but, but yet you see people joining them. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and all these things, these graces that 
in my opinion, abound out of like complete and utter, like you, you can't think about this on a, on a natural level. Right. And so I always have appreciated the miraculous of the monastic tradition. And, um, you know, there's a guy named uh, St. Charles for Oh, okay. Amazing. So he is, he is sort of the, 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 the grandson, if you will, of my favorite saint, which is St. Anthony, because St. Anthony started the monastic tradition. What I love about this guy, I absolutely love about him. And it, it should be something that we all sort of hold in our hearts as, you know, just something that we can all experience and encounter in our lives. He had this ultimate conversion. He was a soldier. Um, had a this Parisian ul- playboy. Yeah, yeah. Had this ultimate conversion. Mm-hmm. What did he want? Mm-hmm. What did he want? He wanted to go to the desert. Yep. And live among the Muslims. And live among the Muslims. But but he wanted to live a, a, a strict monastic life. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and the sufferings mm-hmm. of Jesus of Nazareth. Yeah. And it was beautiful. What a great idea, mm-hmm. right? And and the bishop said, "Yeah, go ahead." Right. And so you go, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's go ahead. He's like, yeah, yeah, go. "Yeah, go ahead, do it." So he goes down there and and he sets up shop, right? Which is probably like a tent or whatever. And and he's he's in there and he's just loving the Lord all day long and he's living as a hermit, pretty essentially. Mm-hmm. He's not actively <laughs> engaging the communities. He's just living there. He's praying for these people, you know, going outside for necessary things. And people just start, this is, this is, this is what I love about it is that God sends people to Mm -hmm. him Mm -hmm. and he becomes confused. He's just like, I don't, I just want to, this is what I was trying to do, Lord. Right. (laughs) But people start coming to his door. It happens so much with the desert fathers. Yeah. It happens so often because you hear stories of this holiness and you see this holiness and people seek out that holiness. But but it wasn't apparent. I I don't think in my assessment of all that I've read about him, which is extensive. I don't think the assessment is that he was just out in the crowds and talking to people. No, there were warring clans and all these things around him that were somewhat dangerous if he got out there. And I don't think he was like aiming for that. I think he was there. He was praying. The, there were people started coming to his door and he started writing his bishop. He's like, dude, I don't know what's going on in those words. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Instead of excellency, I don't know what's going on. He's like, dude, 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 I don't know what's going on. Charles dude for call. (laughs) Uh, but what I, I think he would be very I, open to that. What I love about it, the monastic tradition is that people like utterly move away from our society and get into deep prayer and contemplation and God sends people to them miraculously. Mm-hmm. And I, I just find that as our, as in our tradition as the most, you know, cause like I, I want things from God. I, I ask things from God, I, you know, and I don't trust right. And in, in certain things in certain areas of my life, this, this is like the ultimate trust, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's not even trust. It's like, I'm embarking on this way to unite myself mm-hmm. to you. And then you just start doing things, you know? And, and what it really says to me is that God is ultimately in control of everything. He can do anything. Yes. And so I, my trust has to be like completely in, you be faithful to to him and God will bring things to you. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and, and it's how, how much is our faith? And you, you probably run into this a lot. How much is our faith like quantifiable with God? Like you're like, Hey God, like, you know, I'd ask you, you know, I know you're asking me to do this, but I need you to do this. And da, 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 da. and and that, that was part of my spirituality at the beginning. And once I read these saints, it's like, no, I'm just going to go deep with God and God will somehow present something to mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. You know, and now I have a company that basically evangelizes for him, which I never expected, but I, I gave my, I turned everything over that, that abandonment I never would have had without the monastic tradition. Mm-hmm. You know, another saint kind of out of that tradition, out of that area of the desert, uh, one of my favorite, St. Athanasius. Mm-hmm. St. Athanasius. He spit on people. I love that. No, St. Athanasius <laughs> was so, I mean, his life is like, look, if you're going to cast St. Athanasius in a movie, like put a beard on like, I don't know. <laughs> Who's the dude in Die Hard? Bruce oh, Willis. Bruce, Bruce Willis. Yeah, put, a, put a beard on Bruce Willis and have him just like walking yeah. around just. 
putting up with all this crazy stuff going around yeah. with him and not caring and going forward. I mean, yeah. he was a machine. He yeah. was unstoppable. He can, he was one of the first people to, to come up with the, the the list of the books of the canon of the Bible. He helped develop the, and define the dogma of the Trinity. He fought against the heresies. He was exiled multiple times. Arian heresy, yeah. Attempted to be killed so many times. He was just so resolute and so perseverant. You could not stop this man. They would ship him out and he'd come back. And, and I just, <laughs> I identify with that sort of doggedness in the faith that there's this precision of theology and there is, there's no way that you are going to stop me from moving this forward. And that, my personality, I really, really relate with that. And St. Athanasius, I mean, the, um, you know, his, the Athanasian Creed, it's amazing. His writings are amazing. That. Yeah. Is that a, a creed he put forth in yeah, the area? Yeah, the Athanasian Creed was one of the things that helped to develop the Nicene Creed. Okay. You know? I yeah. mean, it's just, just so, such a powerhouse in the history of the church. I, I can't tell you how much I respect him. And I, I love his, the motto that is associated with him. It's Athanasius Contra Mundum, which is Latin for it's Athanasius against the world. Well, did you I know? Love that. Did you know that during the Aaron Heresy, I did a big um, research project in the seminary on this. He was one of nine bishops that were faithful, right? Out of one hundred and twenty-nine, right? I mean, so against all ma- odds. Yeah, I mean, it's like like it's Saint Athanasius. That. He's in the Nakatomi Tower, and all the <laughs> Aryan bishops. He's got no shoes on. Uh, uh, They're uh, all coming after him, and he's letting, he's not going to stop. Uh, you know, uh, and he's going to kick. Arius Hans Gruber right off the top of that building. <laughs> you know, he, Athanasius Contra Mundum, Athanasius Against the World. I You're love not going to stop him no matter the odds. I I love that. I wholeheartedly and am so, join with you and your in, love for him. He's in such, con, contra, I guess, not contradiction, but um, contrast with St. John. St. John was so meek, gentle, loving. Mm. And Athanasius mm. is this bull, this mm. unstoppable force. And I think he had a lot of love in him. I just think you couldn't stop it from the but truth. The way he expressed it. Right. His, yeah. His pursuit of truth. Yeah. If the, he, look, if there was two Christians left in the world, he would have considered that this is the true faith. Yeah. And that is yeah. the kind of faith that we need now in the face yeah. of so much uncertainty. You yeah. know, I pray yeah. for another Athanasius in our church. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, for me, like I have such a, a large group of saints that I've collected over the period of my journey. So it's hard to really identify exactly, you know, who I, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's, you're, you're like immersed in the saints. And, but I, I just, I, I have such a very deep connection um, that I, I admire them so much. But I'm, I'm curious to find out your confirmation saints. So for me, I've already kind of referenced my love for St. Maria Goretti, St. Valentine, because of just my early my early years, St. Valentine became more prominent to me because my confirmation teacher showed me a movie about St. Valentine and how he gave of his life so courageously to be fed to the lions, to defend the dignity and the sacrament of marriage. And I thought that was super bold and courageous and masculine. You know, for you guys, the, the confirmation saints that you chose – who did you choose for your confirmation saying and why? Well, I mean, going back to my engagement with saints, right? It was through my conversion. And the first thing that was um, was there was the date of my conversion with St. Joseph. Well, I didn't know my confirmation saint. You didn't remember? No, I didn't know it. I didn't know it. Like, okay. I didn't care. Uh-huh. I got kicked out of confirmation class. I got confirmed <laughs> because the lady didn't want to put up with me. I'm not joking. And so, but, but later I found out that I chose Anthony. Oh, that's awesome. And, and so it like, even in, even in my testy childhood and aggravation that I caused everybody, like I still came back and found out that it was Anthony after the, my he, appreciation for him. Well, mine was, mine was St. John. Mm. I, that's, there was. You're John all the way. John all the way. Yeah. yeah but there wasn't even a question. Now, before you tell us yours, why don't you tell everyone about our sponsors and we can give a cliffhanger of what your confirmation is. I'd be happy to. We are most grateful for our sponsors. 
And I have to first start with Hallow. Hallow is the number one Catholic meditation and guided prayer application in the App Store today. Be sure to visit Hallow because when you do, you'll see all sorts of prayer and meditation guided efforts that they have put together in a beautiful and most attractive way. From Teze to Lexio Divina to Rosary and to daily gospel reflections and so much more. This is a beautiful application that you should definitely have on your phone. And if you utilize this platform, you will truly be able to advance in not only your understanding of the Catholic tradition of prayer, but be able to cultivate that in your own practice uniquely to you. This number one Catholic meditation and prayer app is specifically out there for you to grow in your faith. We are so grateful for their work. We are so grateful for their sponsorship. And you should take a moment and check them out because they are truly at the very forefront of technological advancement and the new evangelization. So check out Hallow Catholic Meditations and Prayer App today. We want to tell you about our sponsor, Exodus 90. Exodus 90 is 90 days of prayer and asceticism, cold showers and devout prayer moving through the book of Exodus so that men could find greater freedom in Christ. This program is a tremendous program that over 20,000 men have already gone through, and you should consider becoming the very next member in this very powerful movement. Please consider to join Exodus 90 now. Check them out. You will not regret it. Ave Maria University, our sponsor, is an institution of higher learning in the Catholic tradition, and one that is very, very dear to me, as I am an alumnus and a graduate of 2008 from the new campus. We were part of the first graduating class, and it is awesome to see how much Ave Maria University has grown and has become not only the youngest Catholic institution, but one of the most powerful, driven in academics and faith. It is a university that appeals to all. And we'd like you to consider becoming a student at Ave Maria University, or if you know someone that is of age that may be looking at colleges and universities around the country, be sure to tell them about Ave Maria. There are over 30 majors. There's programs undergrad as well as postgrad, all the way up to PhDs in theology. You do not want to miss a chance to attend this university. It is surrounded by the oratory, this beautiful church in the middle of Ave Maria town, just 30 miles away from Naples and the beautiful beaches. It's in Southwest Florida. So the weather is beautiful, but the greatest thing and the most beautiful thing about the university is the community. The community life is a place where young people find belonging and most importantly, encounter Christ in the beautiful tradition of the Catholic faith. So check out Ave Maria university today. You won't regret it. All right. Thanks for that, Padre. So cliffhanger, we left you with the cliffhanger. Who's your confirmation saint? So my confirmation saint is St. Valentine. So that, that was the thing that inspired me the yeah, most was great. Valentine's courage. And, you know, what, what really confirmed me in more of a bold way of living my life and, and my, my Catholic faith is St. John Paul II. That's when things really started to crystallize in my own Catholic identity so John Paul, and that's what, you know, you're asking me before, who, who would you name your firstborn child? Um, you know, so if you were to ask me a boy, it would be John Paul. If it was a girl, it would be Anne Elise. And St. Anne, for me, I grew up with my grandmother praying to St. Anne all the time. And from my earliest memories, a statue of St. Anne instructing the Blessed Virgin Mary was from my very earliest memory. So that for me as an Italian, like I, I hold on to that stuff very, very sentimentally. Mm -hmm. So those, those are definitely, those are, yeah, 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 definitely without a doubt. At first <laughs> I wanted to pick, my first inclination was to pick uh St. Uh, Dionysus Exegist because he was really? the one who, he was the one who I have set, a great book on him. He's he's the one who set uh the calendar and yeah. the year and he was a historian and I love that. But then the the they were like, I'm not sure he's venerated in the <laughs> West, maybe just the East. I don't know. I'm like Okay, well, I'm going to John. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how it happened. Yeah, that's when, how it happened. That's excellent. But it was always gonna be John. Oh, yeah. for sure. I think I might have been messing with him. I don't know. Uh, so you know, so we're talking about our favorite saints, you know, and we want you, everyone out there, we want you to tell us your favorite saints. So what I'd and like, why and why? Yeah. So what I'd like for us to do is let's just go through and just 
take your five, turn. Five, five best just, saints. Just or something. pick five saints that you love. You don't have to get into their story, but just name Real your quick. top five. Name your starting five. Your favorite. Your favorite saints. Your team. Okay, I like Saint Stephen for his sense of humor. Yeah, Lawrence. Saint Sorry, Lawrence. Saint Lawrence for his <laughs> sense of humor. <laughs> his first favorite saint. You don't even know his name. No, no, it's, it's <laughs> Turn me over. It's yeah. late. I'm done on this We're side. Recording this late. Yeah, this yeah. is late. Um, uh, next, uh, Saint John Paul II because of his um, impact in my life. Yeah, man. Uh, Saint Athanasian. Athanasius for his courage. Mm -hmm. What is that? Three. That's three. Saint Maximilian Colby. Yes. Yes. Um, and uh, the the Jesuit saints that were martyred when they came over to the United States. Mm. The yeah, Brebeuf. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The guys have. Those yeah. Guys I mean, are they. Oh, yeah, they were powerful. They, but but their martyrdom, they they knew they were being martyred, and they they forced forced it, and mm -hmm. they're just like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Are my five. Let me it's courageous. Saint Bernadette. I love Saint Bernadette so much. Um, she has helped me so many times, and just the simple faith is, you know. Sometimes I can get overly analytical about. No. Oh, shut up. <laughs> but she's always a reminder that you know a simple trusting faith of a childlike yeah. mind is so much more than any other type of faith. Mm -hmm. And going back to her again, simple and that. Our Our Lady would show up to someone so poor, so simple, so uneducated in a garbage dump. Puts all of my expectations about faith on its ear. So yeah. I love that. Um, Thomas Aquinas. I loved St. Thomas Aquinas. The way that he used his mind in pursuit of the faith is absolutely amazing. Um, I've always had a special devotion to uh, Pope St. Gregory the Seventh, and he is not a very... I don't know You, you don't about. know who he is. But he was a, a medieval. We've talked about him. Yeah, he's a medieval yeah. pope. He was a reformer. He was a statesman, and it was his example of using all of his gifts, all of his skills, in various ways, always for the church. He was a man of the church in service of the church. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely love that. Uh, that's three, right? It is. Um, I love. I love. Um, let's see, who would I pick? I love Pope Pius the Tenth. And not for the reason of, uh, so everyone's like, oh, well, he's all related with tradition, whatever. I love that he was a mailman's son, that he was said, I'm a poor pastor and that I die a poor pastor. He had so much love for the church. He opened up communion, the frequent reception of communion. Mm. He was clear minded. He had this, res he looks respectable. He looks like, look, if you're it really do, does. He it looks does. like a man it's of dignity. Like, dignity. I mean, uh, I see dignity in him. Truly. But it's such a simple... He wears it beautifully. Right. The simplicity of dignity, I respect so much. Mm -hmm. That's what I respect most in people, when mm -hmm. they can have dignity and simplicity. Um, And my last one, who am I going to pick? Um, there's so many, it's, and I have to pick one more. I love St. Peter. He's just, he's just so, he's so, he's such a perfect example of the body of Christ. He's so flawed. He's so impetuous. He's so trusting. He's so powerful and holy, but still so human. Mm -hmm. A really good example for everyone out there. So. Not this, a, not a brilliant man, but was chosen as the. Again, I, I just I the like rock. I like these either incredibly simple. God does stuff like incredibly that. Mm -hmm. simple saints or incredibly high minded saints. Those are the yeah. ones that I gravitate towards. So, you know, in nowhere I guess, in extremes. No, I, lo I love them all, but I like those oh, for those sure. two extremes. Yeah, and the, you know, finding balance in my life through them helps. I'm not surprised that you chose Saint Peter because yeah. I could see I could see that in you. For me, it's it's just so difficult. So I'm going to throw out this initially. Maria Goretti, John Paul II, Saint Valentine, they're off the yeah, they're yeah. off the Richter scale. So yeah. I I I will not reference them, but obviously the they are very, very important to me. Uh first and foremost, I was affiliated to the Diocese of St. Augustine on May 22nd in 2006, which is the feast of St. Rita of Castia. Mm -hmm. I dedicated my priestly discernment to her patroness. Mm. 
And oh. she was there for me from day one all the way to my ordination, and then she has been there since. And by far, St. Rita has shown her miraculous hand in impossible situations, which is her perfect task before God. You know, she's an incredible woman that I turn to for, you know, marriage counseling and and a lot of my own impossible situations that I'm facing. I turn to her for, for prayer. So by far, St. Rita is, is up there for me. St. Faustina was... Uh, one of the first mystics that I came into contact with um, through the vice postulator for her cause, Father Mikolenko, who became a spiritual mentor and a father to me. Uh, he's an MIC, a Marian of the Immaculate Conception. And he really adopted me and taught me so much in my early days of my reversion. And I could not value that relationship next to the relationship that he he really inspired in me because he taught me a lot about her and I really started to develop my own sense of theology and my own understanding of God through her teachings as she is so properly called the secretary of the mercy, mercy of, of God. God yeah. So, you know, that, that by far is, is also another, another uh, component to my own relationship with the saints. Another one is St. Joseph, my middle name, Joseph. I, I have a deep love for St. Joseph. And since I became a priest he has become the central, most important intercessory, prayerful, uh, you know, investment of my of my prayer life. Really developing my own sense of masculinity, developing my own sense of stewardship over the house of God. Um, you know, mm. now I'm entrusted with this mission and and building a church. I've never you know, heard that, like the stewardship of the house of God through the priesthood. That's mm -hmm. that's yeah. very beautiful. It, a lot of the images of Saint Joseph, he'll be holding. A the church, church. Mm -hmm. yeah. the church in his hands. He'll be holding the church because he's the patron of the universal uh, you, church. Yeah, yeah. It's usually St. Peter's. And yeah, yeah. it's St. It's Peter's or he'll be using, he'll be holding, you John know, Lateran. Yeah, he'll be holding John yeah. Lateran or he holds the, uh, I forget what it's called. It's like the 90 degree angle for construction. I forget the tool that it's, that's the square. Called. The square. Yeah. So he he's holding the square in his hand as well. Not much of a construction guy. I'm not you? much of. A, I did I did take wood shop back in the day. But uh, you know Saint Joseph has become a very very important uh, person in my own priestly identity, my own identity as a man, and uh, so I, I certainly turn to Saint Joseph all the time. Um, I would say fourth for me, and and this is it's it's challenging, but. Um, St. Ignatius of Loyola, I have always had a, a deep sense of communal identity with, you know, he had the, the, uh, cannonball hit his knees and it, it you know, it, it was the catalyst for his, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah. uh, the basketball hit my knees and yeah. it was the, it was the catalyst for my conversion and somebody crossed you up. It, <laughs> No, that you got your ankle, you got your ankles <laughs> broke. So. No, 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 no. I mean, I wish I would have been like defending Allen Iverson where he broke my ankles and this happened to me, but it didn't happen. And if there's anybody out there that said that it happened to me, it did not have stories. <laughs> just <laughs> but, to get that clear. Just to get that, just to get that very, very, very clear. But Ignatius uh, has impacted my spiritual life by far. In any form of, of spirituality, I'm definitely, you know, uh, a Jesuit in that respect. Discernment of spirits, application of senses, and, and the his... The Ignatian examination, the, yeah. The, the examination of consciousness. All of that stuff applies to my own spiritual life. And then his sense of evangelization, by far. Do I have to reference St. Francis? I've already referenced St. Francis, Francis yeah, yeah. so I can kind of get a little pass on. You got to pick one more. Pick one I more. get to pick one more. Throw one more out. Perfect. Venerable Fulton Sheen. I know oh, he's not. A, I know that yeah. he's not a saint, dude. He's awesome. Yeah, I love him. Oh man, but, I love him so much. You know, we're doing my this. Wife loves him. We're like doing this crazy. podcast. Some of my earliest memories of being with my grandmother, hanging out, listening oh, to EWCN out. was Mother Angelica and. And Venerable Fulton Sheen. And, wow. you know, he was so captivating the way he instructed, because it wasn't about like the the specifics of his theological presentation. It was about his conviction, his eyes that communicated through the screen. He had that same dignity. He did. That he had, that's yeah. a great point. Yeah. He had that dignity. Yeah. He held his office with utmost respect because he was humbled by his office. And I pray to God that I hold that same humility because I feel so humbled to be a priest. Yeah. I, I really do. Like, I don't feel like I deserve 
yeah. this this type of life, you know? Mm. So Venerable Fulton Sheen is is definitely up there for me as as somebody that I look up to. And, you know, I pray to God that he becomes a saint and, too. and Absolutely. progresses toward that path. But that would be my five. We know he's there. The fab five. Yeah. All right. We know he's there. The so, fab I mean, five. <laughs> we want you all to list your five favorite saints because, look, we can't, we can't talk about the saints enough because they're, they're our helpers. They're our brothers and sisters. They're the ones who have went before us and had showed us the example of how to live our faith in a way that is pleasing to God. Uh, and we should emulate them as much as possible. They're our heroes. Yeah. Now, and before we go, I have an inquisition question oh for Lord you. Oh, Lord have mercy. Now, my patron saint is St. George. Mm -hmm. And yours is Anthony. Yeah. Because there's no St. Ryan. Mm -hmm. Okay. There should be. I think there is. There's no St. Ryan. Are you sure? I'm positive. Yeah, you would know. I would know. <laughs> You're going to be the first Ryan. No, the that's the question. We need a St. Ryan. Yes. If you were a betting man and you had a pick and looking at our paths, which one of us is going to be St. Ryan? Oh, dude. Golly, that's you horrible. Not, unless, why unless, would you why do would that you, to unless, me? Unless we die at the same moment and we become the co-St. Ryans. That would be cool. That would suck. Well, I don't want to die next vote. to you, dude. I, I love you, but I don't want that to happen. We do something crazy then. <laughs> We've almost died together too many times. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Um, okay, how about this? What a horrible question. Either, either you can either answer that or you can answer who's going to be Ryan the Greater or Ryan the Lesser. Okay, I would say Ryan the Greater. Mm, it's still a bad question. I know it is. That's why I like watching him squirm. Yeah. I don't care about the answer. I don't either. I know the answer already. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and since you do, he's going to be the Ryan the Greater. <laughs> is, that, is that good or bad? No, it's very good. Is it better than the lesser? Because it, it's got to be based in humility. Is it the lesser, like, better because you're a lesser? Well, it depends how you look at it, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, like, you know. All right, answer the original question. If you're a betting man, you got to put 10 bucks. Which one of us is going to become the saint first? This is going to mm. cause a fight later. I know. The <laughs> and and I know y'all can vote, too. <laughs> Just go with the greater. Go with the greater. You can do it, Father. <laughs> what are going to do? <laughs> um... This is the same question that John and James asked Jesus. You know, hey, if I get to heaven before See, you, but here, okay, here's the thing. Not, if I were to uh, you know, not give analysis to this, you have a very, very, very strong work ethic, and you die to self. You have an unbelievable sense of charismatic spontaneity of responding to the situation and following it wholeheartedly with passion to the point of death. So, so mine's, mine's like supernatural. His is like knowledge and, 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 <laughs> and human. So is I'm going to rely on you guys. No, you're, no, you're not jumping so out of this. You know, I'm not going to jump. No, okay. you're, the, you're, the, you're, the, uh, you're the postulator of our cause. Just make a decision so we can go. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go home? I want to go home. Come on. Come on. He's my he's my road dog, your man. Boy, dude. He's my boy, man. You, you can't you can't. We were step seminary down. brothers, oh, man. All right. Yeah. I love you, Shield. Don't what? look down, man. Hey, why don't, don't you? Look down. Okay. Why don't you thank all these people for coming <laughs> and listening to the show? And yeah, we do. We uh, want to get you. <laughs> I'll concede. I love you both. I I'll your concede, mind, dude. <laughs> what is this? What is this boomer now? <laughs> <laughs> well, my friends, we want to thank you so much for joining us on this recent episode of the Catholic Talk Show. We want to give a big shout out to all the people who support our show in prayer, all the people on our social media platforms. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as all of our patrons out there. If you want to be a financial contributor to this show to make sure that we continue to produce this material that hopefully entertains you, <laughs> please go to patreon.com forward slash the Catholic talk show. There you'll be able to see every way that you could support us and share our show in the social media platforms that you're on. But also if you want to share our show, go to www.catholictalkshow.com. Was that four or three W's? Was that three or four? I don't know. You just throw W's. Just go to catholictalkshow.com. <laughs> It's a long day today. I think it was three. I'm just it was teasing. three, yeah. CatholicTalkShow.com, you'll see every way that you can listen in or view our content. So make sure that you're sharing this wonderful show, and we want to continue to develop our community, and that takes you guys. So I need you to tell me 
who's going to be <laughs> the first saint. The Ryan. first saint. Don't waste Ryan. your time. I'm going to see. And you be all now here's the thing. I want to hear your like time. really now, convicting. See, now I said I knew the answer. And you know what the answer is? What's the answer? It ain't going to be either of us. <laughs> yeah. That's why I said, don't waste your time. Yeah, it's not going to be either of us. Well, I want to be a saint, but, you know. Hopefully we're all we'll saints see. in it's the heavenly, be, heavenly court. From yeah, it. we're probably going to have to take a bull for that to become. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to try our best. Some sort of martyrdom or yeah, something, I mean, yeah. All for we'll the glory there, of we'll God. Get, hopefully we get there eventually out of purgatory, but I don't think yeah. we're going to be Santo Subito. You never know. We'll no. never know. Pray we're for no the JP grace. Too. Pray right. for the grace. Well, we'll see you next week. God bless.